Hello, Internet. It's Daniel with Driving Dragons today, back with another reaction video. This time we are talking about RPG Elite. A while back, and I need to redo this, I had a video on, I believe it was eight channels that you should subscribe to if you are a tabletop role-playing game player, and this was definitely one of them. Um, RPG Elite is a smaller channel, but he is the, he's kind of the, I guess you could say the anti-OSR guy. Now, he is aggressively anti-D&D to the point that he won't even name the game on his channel. And he definitely plays older games like Traveler, Top Secret, that sort of thing. But, and he's been playing a long time. However, um, his channel is filled with all kinds of great social commentary, um, great unique perspectives and as far as uh his philosophy and his gaming it is very 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 rp heavy and always more about the role-playing aspect and the social aspect than it is the mechanical and rules aspect which um, is what really separates him from say the old the osr which tends to be you know roll in public you know make sure everybody can see how you roll um very, you know, absolutely 100% to the rules that are written in the book type mentality. But uh, this time is one of his philosophy videos, and he uh, he has a group he calls RPG Elites, which are people who are trying to push the role-playing aspect and the social aspect of their games to the next level. And in this video, it is the one thing that RPG Elites never say Three reasons why I have not seen this video, so this is a raw reaction. Though this big, inclusive puzzle piece at the beginning and knowing his channel tells me that this is probably going to have to do with um, making a lot of the uh, Jenny D's of the world cry if they uh, ever bothered to watch this. So let's see what he's got to say. The term inclusive gets thrown around quite a bit in our culture here in the United States and beyond, mostly the Western continents. And those who say it don't know how to implement it because more often than that, it is a one-way street when it... Sure know how to call that one. Um, get ready uh, get ready with the tears for the, uh, the uh, Jenny D's and the uh, Indestructisoys of the world. Comes to that. Now, people say that stuff because they want to appear altruistic, but they really are not. They care nothing about the people that they are so-called arguing for to be inclusive with. And at the end of the day, all this is really is a whole bunch of gaslighting and virtue signaling. And what you'll find is that if you press them just a little bit, they are not as inclusive as they think they are. We'll get to that part in a few. Because we have a different mindset, a different standard, there is one thing that RPG elites will never say. And yet this is a phrase that gets said in the tabletop RPG community a lot. I want to address that today. And the thing that we will never say is this. Everyone is welcome at my table. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that a hot take right there? RPG elites never say that everyone is welcome at my table. And you know what? That is the most true thing on the planet because we all have people who are not welcome at our table and they're not welcome for a ton of different reasons. And that is probably one of the things that is the most, that is said and not meant the most often. Like, to be honest, how many Republicans do you think Jenny D welcomes everyone at her table? I'm sure she welcomes plenty of Republicans as long as they sit down and kowtow and don't say anything and just be nice and quiet and grin and nod whenever she starts spewing her social leftism and socialism BS. But the second they say, hey, you know what, maybe I should be able to keep the money that I earned or maybe we should have some restrictions on a few things like not showing the uh, I don't know, drag queens to kids or something like that. Uh, I, I see how quickly that uh, that person happens to be welcome at her table. Uh, no. Uh-uh. 
Oh, uh, heck no. When it comes to gathering around the table and playing at a tabletop RPG and investing hours of our time into it, RPG elites have no qualms about saying that they are not all inclusive. We are quite comfortable with that. Now, why? Well, because we're discerning. We are discriminating. We're picky. This falls right in line with the RPG Elite quality number five, which I've done a pair of videos on. And if you haven't seen those videos, I'll have links for them down in the description below. And I suggest you do so if you're interested in the RPG Elite philosophy or really to get some understanding about this video you're watching right now. Today, what I'm going to do is give you three reasons why RPG elites never say that phrase. I'm also going to give a way that we would say it to others. So this is an alternative way of saying kind of the same thing. And I'm also going to show that people who say that, many, not all, but many, like dare I say it, the majority, often use a double standard when it comes to that phrase. Absolutely, 100% correct here. Um, I'm going to stop picking on poor Miss Jenny D and her half million subscribers for a second. I'm just using her, and to be fair, I'm just using her as a stand-in for the typical hardcore social leftists that he's more or less talking about more than anything else. But let's just look at this from a, a real perspective. No, not everyone is welcome at our tables because some of us are going to be doing hard storytelling tables and we don't want a munchkin or a hardcore power gamer at our tables. And to be fair, that hardcore power gamer probably doesn't want to be at our table either if we're running, say, a very story focused, very conversation, social focused game. At the same time, if I'm running an old school keep on the borderlands, hack and slash dungeon dive that heavy rp player that wannabe voice actor over there probably doesn't want to be at my table any more than i want him at my table derailing the game trying to find fifteen thousand character motivations for why he needs to go in the damn hole and kill the damn goblins so it doesn't have to be personal religious, political, social reasons why you might not want everybody at your table. It can very easily just be gameplay reasons too. Now, if you have no idea who I am, my name's Servant of Shiloh. This is RPG Elite, and this is the place where I focus on putting the RP back in the RPG, giving you tools, tips, tutorials, and real talk about the tabletop RPG space and culture, which is what we're on today. We are on some real talk so we're going to slide into this today immediately like right now now don't get me wrong when people say everyone is welcome at my table i know what they're trying to say i do really however it's naive it's gullible, and it's more often than not the catalyst for introducing all kinds of problems in your sessions. It's not living in the real world filled with human beings, those problem individuals. So I recognize the sentiment. The sentiment is a noble sentiment. It's just not practical, and neither is it wise. Listen, I'm not trying to rain on your campfire here, all right? <laughs> I like optimism. Shoot, I will pray for the best to happen, but you gotta understand something. See, I'm an optimistic realist. And that means that, hey, even though I pray for the best to happen, I deal with what is in front of me. In other words, I don't ignore what's in front of me for the sake of optimism. We're looking at things as they are. So we're not saying the same thing over and over again and thinking that somehow magically in contradiction to reality that this thing that we keep repeating will somehow magically appear or by osmosis or some other 
process. That is not how we approach this. We're not gonna bury our heads in the sand and wish for the best, especially if reality is right in front of us. We take reality as it is and we adjust accordingly. Every RPG elite does this, especially when it comes to who is going to sit at our table. So in case you're just listening, that first point was that it's not realistic. You don't say it because it's not realistic, which is the truth. Because the fact of the matter is, is that it is realistic. You know, you're going to have people who kind of set you off the wrong way, who are not quite what they need to be to be at your table. They're going to be somebody who say keeps trying to ram their politics or their social beliefs or their religious beliefs through your game. They're going to be a, a person who just has a play style that is radically different from the rest of the group. They're going to be a person who is not consistent with showing up or being part of the group. They'll be just a bad player, somebody who doesn't actually Take care of, uh, you know, having their character sheet ready, knowing what their character's abilities are, understanding how their stuff works, understanding their equipment, keeping track of their ammunition, all that kind of jazz. There's a number of reasons it's just not realistic to think everybody will be welcome. Let's take a look at the second point. Our table. So, this, so the second point, everyone is not worthy to sit at the table. I think he's probably about to start touching on some of those things about, like, say, the person who doesn't like to show up on time, the person who is consistently unreliable about being there, the person who's never prepared, etc. I know people are gonna get all up in a tizzy because I use the word worthy. Now, before you go all out and get a knee jerk reaction and get triggered and then throw lucid responses all out the window, Let's go ahead and define terms. You guys know who have been watching this channel for any length of time know that I like to make sure we're all on the same page. And even though we might speak the same language as far as English or something, it doesn't mean that we all mean the same thing. So when I give definitions, I give definitions as far as this is what I'm talking about. And if that's not what you want to do, you don't want to go there and you still want to be triggered, this probably is not the video for you. So let's go and define this word worth or worthy and make sure we're all on the same page when it comes to this. So the first place I went was the Oxford Dictionary and it defined worth like this. Having or showing the qualities or abilities that merit recognition in a specified way. Now the Cambridge Dictionary defines it in this way. Deserving respect, admiration, or support. Yes, amen. Hallelujah and praise the Lord, pass the ammunition on that one. Oh, yes. Wholeheartedly agree with that. See, understand something. We are afforded respect because we are respectful. You're not, you don't deserve respect. You earn it. Isn't that the truth? Too many people coming up, walking onto these games, acting like they should be, you know, given a, a tremendous amount of leeway and that their words should carry a lot of weight, um, particularly when they're joining a group, when they should be more along the lines of saying, hey, uh, how do I fit in? And you earn it because you are respectful. People give you the benefit of the doubt in the first time that they meet you. But when you throw that out the window, you don't deserve Nathan. It is afforded to you by grace. Many people are not worthy on the basis they are not enjoyable people to be around. They don't necessarily have to be toxic. Much of their actions are passive aggressive. They just don't exhibit the qualities that RPG elites look for in individuals who's going to sit around their table. So what are some of the things that we look for? Let me give you five. Number one, we're looking for people who are going to be respectful, people who are going to be courteous and cordial, people who will be invested, 
people who be involved. And then it's going to help here, you know, if you're humorous, be able to take a joke for crying out loud, especially in this culture today where you can't even take a joke anymore. It's ridiculous. People like Don Rickles just would have been canceled long ago in this culture. Far too many people are self-absorbed, narcissistic, and whiny little triggered people. And they bring that attitude to the table. If things are not going the way that they want it, oh, they gonna let somebody know. And often what happens around the table is that, well, the players just won't say anything, right? You want to know why? Because they just don't want the drama, right? And so what happens is they just end up grinning and bearing it. Four to six hours of a tainted, very uncomfortable session because of an individual or individuals who shouldn't even be sitting at the table at all. This all because no one had the boldness to take them aside and say, yo, nah, we, we don't do things like this. We ain't doing this. That attitude is selfish to sit up there and just say nothing because that silence has a detrimental effect for everyone at the table. So That's 100% the truth. 100% the truth. First, like you said, respect is awarded on first by grace. In other words, you come in, I'm going to treat you like a human being. <clears throat> I'm going to, even if I disagree with you, I'm going to welcome you to the table. I'm going to you know, have discussions with you. I'm going to expect you to be able to take ribbing just like I'm going to take that ribbing. I'm going to expect you, even if there is some mild back and forth banter, I'm going to expect you to be able to take that in stride and not get pissy about it, just like I'm not going to get pissy about it. I'm going to expect you to not be deliberately offensive about it, just like I am going to not be deliberately offensive about it. And at the end of the day, yeah, um, I'm almost always a game master, but it is just as bad for a player to not even come to me after a session and say, hey, uh, Bob's over there. Not, not, I mean, dude's kind of, kind of raining on everybody's parade. You know, he's kind of being an asshole so that I can address it. That guy's just as bad as Bob the asshole. So, Hundred percent, got to take some uh, some accountability there. And of course, he mentioned invested, which to me falls onto the part that I was uh, mentioning earlier about being prompt, being on time, being ready to play, knowing your character, et cetera, et cetera. Because if you are invested, that means you put forth the time and the effort. You don't just show up when you want to show up, and the only time you're actually playing the game is when I ask you to roll something. Somebody needs to take that person, pull them aside and be like, yo, we just don't do that here. We don't act like that here. That is not how we roll. And it doesn't need to be the GM that needs to do that. It needs to be somebody whose time is valuable. So if your time is valuable, that means you. This would be the reason why everyone is not worthy to play in a tabletop RPG group, especially an RPG elite group. Next point, everyone is not looking for the same experience. The excitement of playing a tabletop RPG sometimes make us skip over the very important thing. So what happens many times is that we, you know, try to get people together and that's a struggle to get some people together. I mean, it's less so with virtual tabletops, but Hey, still, if you're one of those people who insist when getting together live, then it's either still a struggle just to get people together to play. And then after that, people are so excited, they just want to get into it and they get into it and they start playing. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, maybe two, three sessions in, we start to realize, you know what? I mean, everybody is going in a different direction and what, what's going on here? The reason for that is that the expectations were not laid out in the very beginning. Tabletop RPG sessions are a time-intensive endeavor, and sitting down for four to six hours of stretch is just part of the time that's spent. A GM spends a whole lot of time, you know, maybe two, three, four times, you know, what a session is going to last just to get the whole thing prepared, and that also includes whether or not that they are starting world building from scratch. There's a lot of time invested. Play styles need to be considered as well. 
RPG elites, we focus on high and medium level role play. Some players focus on low level role playing and some don't role play at all. The ones I call heavy tabletop RPG abusers. So trying to accommodate all of these different styles and everything just ends up being a cacophony and chaos and it's just arduous and not fun. This can be avoided by setting expectations before you even start the play, sometimes called session zero. If someone is not looking for what is being offered, then they don't have to waste their time playing something they wouldn't enjoy. This said it earlier, 100% nail on the head, <clears throat> that you don't want to have hardcore power gamer in your role play heavy or your social heavy game. And he probably doesn't want to be there either. And then you can, this is a way that a good player, a great player even, can become hyper, hyper disruptive. Um, I actually experienced this a little bit myself uh, just, uh, just yesterday, actually, for the first time in a decade or so. I got to be a player. Now it's a one shot but I'm immediately going into my player mentality, my what would my character do mode, my thinking as my character. And I'm asking for all these different things. I'm asking about different uh, ancillary NPCs, trying to find certain people in the city, trying to find certain connections and that sort of thing. And I kind of missed it a little bit a couple of times, but, you know, even my, my DM eventually, or my game master, eventually the guy who was running the games, I was, you know, Hey guys, you know, as a one side, a one shot, this is a little bit more kind of on rails, you know, it's a little bit more linear than, you know, than what we'd normally have. And that was a very polite way. And he says it to the whole table and he didn't say it like right after I did something or whatnot, that was kind of a very polite way to kind of put out there is like, Hey, just take the hooks, quit trying to find different ways around because they're not there. You know, as a one shot, this is designed to be super quick and I'm giving you the super obvious, easy ways to figure stuff out. Um, and I could notice a little bit when I would do some more uh, social interactions or ask a few more questions or something. That there were a couple of people around the table who were kind of like, oh, great. You know, it's like, man, he's, you know, why can't he just go to the, what the obvious answer is or to the obvious next step or the obvious idea. And that was me on a very minor level. Like I said, the game went great and everything, but that was me having a play style that didn't mesh with the game. I was doing a very analytical, very in-depth, how would it, this happen in the real world play style approach when being a one shot for a holiday game, I probably needed to be in a, Take the, take the easy answer, move forward, and roll dice kind of approach. So the same thing can happen. And on a large scale, it can actually destroy your group because you get that bored role player, you get that bored power gamer over there who turns into the murder hobo. He gets sick of the social interaction, so he just cuts the Baron's head off, screws everything up. You've got that heavy social player who is sick to death of run and gun, run and gun, run and gun. And instead of taking any of the jobs on the screen sheet, wants to run around town and talk to everybody and their son and wants to go on big shopping sprees and just gobble up the table's time because he's desperate for some kind of social interaction that you don't have built into your, into your game. So it's a hundred percent play style is important. And as a game master, when you're putting session zero together, or when you're first talking to the group, you need to say, hey, look, guys, what are we looking for here? You know, are we looking for a mix? How much are we looking for? What are you guys wanting to go for? This is out the gate, right? So they know, oh, this is not for me. If you set expectations, then you cut all of that stuff out right out of the gate. All right, going on to the double standard. Now, I said that I was going to show this double standard of people who say, you know, everyone's welcome at my table. Because normally what happens in those situations, when you get around the table with one of those individuals and you just happen to be somebody who kind of disagrees with them on a whole lot of things, you're going to find out 
just how inclusive they really are not. They say they are inclusive and diverse when really they mean they are like that when it lines up with what they want or everyone around the table has the same outlook as them. And you- Home run. This is ex- this could be cut and pasted from the whole X card situation that has come up in the safety tools debate. Because for every one person you hear talking about how the X card really helped their game and the safety tools really made their game feel better, there are a million stories of how I threw an X card and I got mocked until I left the game. I got ridiculed and castigated because my X card was something the rest of the table didn't agree with. Or, you know, I said, hey, I really don't want to have, you know, hardcore sexual content in the game. And the next thing I know, they the bard over there is constantly pushing it. And I'm being told, hey, you know, quit being a prude, quit interfering with his agency, quit interfering with his game. And you're throwing the X card down over and over and over again. They eventually just say, well, you, you're you're clearly a, a prude bigot, you know, trying to force your religious uh, Puritanism on me or something like that. Get away from the table. And he is hitting, I mean, to be cut and pasted directly from the safety tools debate. And he is hitting the, the nail on the head. Diversity, inclusion, inclusion, and equity. We are going to be very fair to include everyone who is diverse in every possible way except diversity of thought. We don't want diversity of thought. We don't want diversity of experience. We don't want diversity of opinion. All we want is maybe diversity of skin color. You see, some of these people avoid the impropriety of how that looks if they don't really want somebody at the table. So this is what they do. They won't say that people can't play. So they'll have them play. But what they'll do is they'll make it uncomfortable for that person. Maybe ignore them, pay more attention to the other players or whatever. And they're still sitting around the table because they really don't want them there because guess what? They're not welcome there. That person will eventually probably get the hint and then leave. And then they can say, oh, I didn't tell them to leave. I told you everybody's welcome at my table. Liar. Liar. See, they try to gaslight you with that stuff. To say everyone is welcome at my table is a red flag for RPG elites because that person normally will be a weak individual who will tolerate anything or there will be a sinister individual who really don't mean what they say. But many times it's the former because they want to have bodies to play a game and they're more concerned with appearances instead of experiences. Now, what RPG elites will say is something else. We won't say, well, everybody's welcome at our table because that's not true. Everybody isn't. But what we will say is something like this. Okay, well, let's go ahead and let's see if this is something that you would be interested in. So we're still interested in the person and what they want, but we need to see what they want. And we need to see if this is something that falls in line with what they want. See, that's how you approach those things. This might be a reason why a lot of you are having some problems right now in your tabletop RPG. Because you don't take reality into account, then the people who are not supposed to be at the table, who are not worthy to be at the table, are there. And then those people have a whole different expectation, which you can't blame them if you didn't give the expectations from the very beginning. Let me tell you what happened with my One Ring campaign, just real quick, just so you guys know how this looks. So I did not choose the One Ring. It was my players who chose that. I did not choose that game to play. I gave them five games to choose from. And then I said, okay, you guys, you go ahead, vote which five games, which other five games you want to play. I let it go at that. Now, there were certain games that I wasn't going to play just because of who I am, but at the same (laughs) <laughs> right there. <laughs> the game I refuse to mention on this channel, which it, that would be Dungeons and Dragons. In time, I'm just going to let them go ahead and choose something that they like. Now, I personally wanted to play Numenera, but I was like, hey, I'll just go wherever they'll go. But there were some things that were non-negotiables that I laid down. No profanity. You treat each other with respect. These are simple things, ground rules that I laid out from the very beginning. My campaign has been running for five plus years. See, the expectations were set. Some people were like, oh, nah, I can't do that, right? And I was like, that's fine. That's great. That just saves people a lot of headache. 
But we're certainly not going to sit there and say, well, everybody's welcome at our table. Oh, no, no, no. We're not going to be that foolish. Now, I know this is kind of going to be one of those videos that is going to be touchy for some people. I get it. It always is, especially in this culture. It's ridiculous. But at the same time, you have to understand that tabletop RPGs are ultimately about the people who are there. And if we're not even on the same page out of the gate, what makes you think that I want to sit down and play in a tabletop RPG with you? Or really a board game or anything else. And sometimes people, when they hear worthy and not welcome, and they think that it's personal, it might be. It might be if you're just that kind of person that nobody enjoys being around, then it's personal. But it may not necessarily be personal because of the third reason, right? That we're just not going in the same direction here. I don't want you to be in a place where you're not going to enjoy yourself. So it's not necessarily personal, though it can be. Hey, if you've gotten any value out of this video today and you're not mad and you're still here, then go ahead, do a brother a solid and crush the like ball on boom. And also, if you want to stick around, if you thought it was good enough for you to stick around, then go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the notification. Okay, so yeah, definitely hit the like and subscribe button. There's not a single thing there that's wrong or doesn't need to or is anything that I would ever disagree with or anything that I think that any rational person would disagree with. Because the honest truth of the matter is that not everybody's welcome at your game. Not everybody's welcome at my game. Not everybody's welcome at anybody's game. At the end of the day, we should... We shouldn't exclude people from our games for no reason or for reasons that have no impact on the table. For instance, I'm not going to exclude people because of their race. I am not going to exclude people because of their gender or because of their political affiliation or because of their religion. I am not going to exclude somebody because they are straight, gay, you know, attack helicopter, whatever they you know, whatever they want to be. But if any of those things are ramrodded through the game and become disruptive, then they're going to be instantly excluded. And they're not excluded because of, for instance, being Christian. They're excluded because they use the game as a way to proselytize to the rest of the players and they ruin everybody's good time. It is a time and place thing. And if you're a disruptive force, you're just not welcome. And he, you know, he's got it right. Shiloh, Servant Shiloh's got it, got it right. A hundred percent. Not everybody's welcome. And nine times out of 10, if somebody says everybody's welcome at my table, they probably, in a blazing fit of irony, are the least welcoming tables on the planet. So anyway, that's what I got to say. Like, share, and subscribe. Let me know if there's other channels you'd like me to look at. Um, I'm going to do some more RPG Elite coming up here in the future because I really, really do like his content. And um, he does have a somewhat unique take that I don't really hear from really anybody else on YouTube. Um, but if you got somebody else you want me to look at, drop them down in the comment section and we'll continue on that way. See you guys next time.